Real estate isn't quite in subprime crisis mode. There's no panic and chaos, but the fraudulent paperwork, trillions in derivatives, and rising interest rates are all apparent in most places around the world. Some cities that were climbing higher in a straight line have either stagnated or more than likely fallen to some degree. With real estate making up a growing percentage of economies in many countries, such reliance becomes a very dangerous situation as things start to come down. You came here for the truth so let me unveil that for you today we are going to look at real estate one of my favorite topics because economies are now so reliant on it that just a small change has a big impact so we're going to look at this in the u.s australia and canada i'm going to show you some new details that have come out let's begin by taking a look at this I wanted to discuss this prior to even getting into the situation because it's really the central problem that we experience today. Too much debt, not enough savings. The government shutdown spotlights a bigger issue. 78% of US workers live paycheck to paycheck. And it's not just in the US, but of course we see this in most countries around the world that people are pushing themselves to the absolute maximum. And yet there is no problem as long as that person continues to get paid what they're getting paid as long as they don't lose their job and as long as things don't get more expensive the wheels keep on spinning but as soon as one of those factors is adjusted then you will not have good fortune that's for sure so that really leads me into the next point which is basically real estate has changed it's not where it was before we're not having the euphoria that we once did and the economy is feeling it as a result especially in a place like Canada where the entire economy is basically made up of real estate just a small change is obviously going to be detrimental to the economy on a national level this is the US where you're seeing the 30-year mortgage rate on the inverse as well as the mortgage applications and as soon as the mortgage rate came down just a small amount the mortgage applications increased in a corresponding fashion that's exactly what we're seeing here right now a huge swing a massive amount of people basically went in thought this would be the good time to get into their homes right here I just covered on the last video very quickly giving you the numbers but wanted to show you the chart that corresponds to it it's very clear what people are doing they are trying to get a better rate on their mortgage and I don't blame them obviously but some people might be getting into a home now thinking this is the opportunity let's buy right Right now prices have come down a little bit maybe they're stagnating perhaps and this would be the best opportunity to do so I don't know if that's the best idea but that's what we're dealing with US 30-year fixed mortgage rates you could see on the right hand side the US mortgage rates here at this time they've come down quite a bit in a short period of time as we see some changes that have been made the economy is not so strong as it once was the housing has slowed down in many parts across the US as well as internal pressures happening and worsening and we can see the mortgage rates that have declined it's not the same way in an area like Canada we haven't seen that at all things work a little differently it seems but this happens to be the United States and let's move on to this you're looking at Australia now property price growth quarter over quarter you're looking at this today in the big cities of Australia all coming down to a different degree depending on where we're looking but in Sydney in particular you are witnessing it today it looks like at least 12% down and that is something that most people they have no idea 12% is very significant we're well into the correction territory at that point and it's not the only city that has fallen of course we're looking at major cities not just in Australia but of course some of the biggest cities in the world have fallen in price now while they have run up quite a bit the fact that they can fall even just a few percent is shocking a lot of people when you take on a lot of debt and it's leveraged at such a large level it's going to be a problem for people when the price comes down just a little bit that's what we're seeing
seeing today. You have this huge amount of people in Australia with these interest only loans. I think that that's going to be a big problem for them as well. The economy is reliant on real estate, not quite as much as in Canada, but it is a very big part of the economy there. No matter what they tell you, you have to look at not just directly, not just people who build homes, not just people who finance the homes. We're talking about all of the interconnected industries with that. And it's very important, okay, that it deals with labor and construction and industrial metals and appliances, large and small and so on. Okay, there's a lot to this. Aussie building permits year over year going back into levels we haven't seen since the financial crisis. Building permits are something that you should always keep an eye on if you're looking into purchasing real estate for yourself as well as for an investment. It is important to understand the building permits in your area that you're buying because that gives you an idea one indicator, of course, that tells us what's happening in that respective location. Always pay attention to that. Right now, this seems to have been declining. It's not just in one quarter, but it seems like it's happening quarter after quarter. Not really good since at least the past year. House prices fall at the fastest rate in 35 years as credit tightens, sentiment slips. Falling property prices and weakening consumer sentiment are expected to have knock-on effects across the economy, particularly in the struggling motor industry and retail sector. There's a lot in here. I really want to touch on a few points for you. Make sure you get all this data. We expect the wealth effects we have already seen on how va- high value items such as car sales to exert themselves on broader consumption spending over 2019 as households focus on deleveraging in an environment of declining asset prices, elevated debt levels, and still low wage and income growth. That could be basically anywhere. Although this is to do with Australia, it could be for Canada, it could be for the US, but in this case here, we're seeing that same pattern existing today in Australia. The likelihood of a disorderly house correction where nervous borrowers start to dump property leading to a balance sheet recession is growing. And that's very important. When we're talking the Reserve Bank of Australia putting out warnings like this. You know you've got a problem, okay? So that is not only Australia, okay? Remember Remember that's not just Sydney. I love it when I get all of that negativity coming towards me, coming towards you and I, the subscribers on the channel here, where we see this type of behavior in people. Oh, it's just there. Oh, it's just that. Oh, it's just this. No, it's not the way it is. It goes so much deeper than that. Look, if we're going to see what's happening in a particular country, we can't do this on every single city in the country. We can't break it down to every town, to every neighborhood. How would it be possible to look into data if we do that? Okay, I try to do so. I try to break it down as far as we can, not necessarily looking at things on a national level, but at least on a city, that gives us a good idea of what's happening. And you look into it and you realize that where these big population centers are, that's generally where we have the biggest booms and the biggest busts. If you take the example of Canada, where we have Vancouver and Toronto, obviously that's only two cities. That's where we have seen the most rise up and the craziest activity in general, but that's also 10 million people in terms of the population in two cities. So when you see that the population of the two cities is nearly one third of the country's entire population, that gives us a pretty good idea of what's happening. Okay, so I wanted to just stress that. It really just irks me sometimes when I see that type of silliness in people wanting to try and poke holes into something that is is quite serious. Now for a little dose of truth. Bank of Canada holds interest rate. Read the official statement. Bank of Canada maintains its key interest rate at 1.75%. This information just came out now as of today's recording. And what you see in the media is generally an article like this. This happens to be out of the Financial Post, but you can go to the other major news media and see similar things, even in different countries. You get a little snippet. When they say read the statement, they usually give you about one sentence maybe six words at most, and that's what people get. Okay, what do I need to know? The interest rate's at 1.75%, that's all, I'm done. Most people don't even know what that means. All they know is what they pay for their mortgage, perhaps, and that's about it. But this here, that's not enough for me. You go in one level deeper, the actual Bank of Canada website, we can see Bank of Canada maintains overnight rate target at one and three quarter percent, okay? You can read their statement if you'd like to, but that's not enough. I wanna look at the report that coincides
sides with this statement that was then given a little snippet in the media for people to take in, which they probably wouldn't anyway. So we look at the actual report and that gives us much more detail. We get the insight coming from the Bank of Canada in this case here, but you can do this for the Fed. You can do this in Australia, in the UK, and the ECB produces reports like this. You have to look into it deeper. I try to do what I can, but I'm probably covering maybe you know a fraction of 1% of the information that's out there. So anyway, let's look at this right away. I need to cover a whole bunch of points from this, so stay with me. I'll read it as quick as I possibly can. A pronounced decline in house prices in certain regions in Canada. House prices in the Toronto area are close to 40% higher than they were three years ago. In the Vancouver area, the increase has been even larger, about 50%. Speculative activity has been a significant factor in the prolonged run-up in prices, and then comes the lie. Today, there is less evidence of speculation in some markets, likely due to the combined impact of provincial and municipal housing measures, tightened mortgage finance guidelines, and higher mortgage rates. Okay, all of this is really false because this hasn't gotten to the people yet. Imagine when it actually tightens up what's going to happen. This has been barely, the absolute minimum has been done to try and prevent these housing prices from skyrocketing. Average prices are leveling off in Toronto and in Vancouver. They are declining modestly. Overall, house prices in Canada are now growing at an annual rate of roughly 2%. Nevertheless, price levels remain elevated in the greater Vancouver and Toronto areas. And check this out. Thus, there remains a risk of sharp decline in house prices in these markets markets as well as those affected by the oil price decline. Such a decline in house prices could dampen consumption, check this out, dampen consumption, housing demand, and construction activity. And what they're saying there is a slowdown in the economy. Can you say it with me? Sharp decline in housing prices. That's the risk. That's what I share on a daily basis here. The risks that have presented themselves in these cities, in these markets, in these sectors and yet consistently ridiculed day after day after day. But I'm hoping that this information is getting through to a few people. This is one of the fastest growing financial channels, but unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of stupidity on this platform that gets all the views. But I know that there's a whole bunch of good people out there who really need to know the information. They've been watching, they've been diligent and keeping their days occupied by reading the data and I want to thank you for being here this far into the video. It really tells me that you actually do care about what's happening. Well, let's look at one more piece of information. BMO Capital Market sets the TSX target of 17,000 for 2019. That's right, a chief investment strategist. He has a wonderful title and therefore we should definitely trust him. That means you can put your money into these markets and you'll do just fine. Well, the Toronto Stock Exchange exchange has basically been at the same level for the last 10 years. It was not able to exceed that for a period of time. Of course, when you factor in inflation, we're still at these levels and it's an embarrassment. It is terrible to look at this. The only thing keeping Canada afloat right now is real estate and real estate is looking really weak, but the public doesn't want to hear that information. They want their lullabies. They want their once upon a times. Well, you're not on the right channel if you want that. There's a whole bunch of garbage up on these other channels if you're interested. If you want the lullaby, wrong place to be. I'll tell you that right now. If you want the truth though, this is where you have to be. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. You click that one button and you are supporting this channel. That's all you have to do. So I do appreciate that. I've noticed that many people today have been giving me thumbs up more so than I was experiencing previously. Previously. I really want to thank all of you for doing that. It helps me out as well as it tells people that this is good information. It brings the video higher up on the search rankings. So I want to thank you for that. And last but not least, if you want the financial education that you were not taught in school, that was kept from you, well then, these two books have everything you need from the foundation, the history, the asset classes, making money, tax incentives, so much more. It's all available. Check it out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, version. You can get that at themoneygps.com.